in to the latest edition of the Five Reasons Podcast. My name is Chris Whittingham, joined as always by Ethan Skolnick. We are part of the Five Reasons Sports Network. It is a group of networks focusing, uh, a group of networks, a group of podcasts focusing on Miami sports and everything going on with the pro and the college teams. Find on the Miami Heat, Miami Heat beat on the Dolphins, three yards per carry and the fish tank on the Marlins, which are just about due to get started with spring training. Swings and misses has you covered in the build up to that goalie on ice as you covered on the Florida Panthers and the Five Rings podcast as you covered on the University of Miami. Tons of great stuff as well. Our Spanish language podcast, Cinco Razones, is going strong right now. We also have the Royal Rumble happening yesterday. So if you want to check out Smart Your Territory, guys, Josh Chappelle and Mr. Bill 11 have you covered on the Rumble. Lots going on around the Five Reasons Sports Network. We ask you to check it all out on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast. So, Ethan, we wake up this morning uh, to the Woj bomb and then all the insiders' bombs uh, on Anthony Davis has requested a trade from the New Orleans Pelicans and has said that he will not sign the the mega money extension with the New Orleans Pelicans that could pay him up to $268 million over the next six years. Now, uh, Albert Namid of, of Heat, of, I think it's heathoops.com, uh, and, and just general Twitter capologist has said that he's really only costing himself about $20 million if he maximizes his revenue in the intervening period. So uh, that max obviously is very attractive because it guarantees long-term security, but Anthony Davis is willing to take the risk. We're going to get into the heat angle on this and how the heat might be able uh, to potentially get into these trade talks, but uh, your first reaction when you saw that news, and in general, why do you think they're doing this now. Obviously, you don't hire Rich Paul if you don't have any intent of doing something like this. But uh, just the idea that Anthony Davis would indeed uh, ask out of New Orleans when he had kind of painted himself as someone who wanted to be there. And in general, what do you make of the fact they're doing it now, uh, you know, days before the NBA trade deadline? Well, first, I mean, I, I don't think it's a surprise that he wants out. I think this has been coming for a while, even when he committed there the last time. I mean, New Orleans, look, here's the thing with small market teams. They're on a clock. They're on a mm-hmm. clock, and you have to build a contender in a short period of time, and it, need, it means you almost need to be perfect with your picks. Like Oklahoma City, if you look at what they built early on, they were perfect with their picks, right? KD was perfect. Like, I mean, you can say it was obvious at number two, but it was perfect. Westbrook was perfect. That was the best player they could have acquired at that spot, and a lot of people thought they took him too early. Harden was perfect. I didn't like the pick at the time. I saw him play down here in Miami uh, in the NCAA regionals, and he was not very impressive to me. I didn't know at the time that he would flail his way to 37 foul shots a game in the NBA. <laughs> but, but I mean, he slept, walked through that game. You, they drafted, you drafted three league MVPs is basically what you did in a five-year period, which is incredible. Right. And even that was not enough. Even that was not enough to keep the thing together. So, I mean, whether you're in Cleveland, the only reason LeBron stayed as long as he did was because he was from there. I mean, they didn't put a very good team around him. They had seven years to do it before he left for Miami, and they never gave him another star to play with. Okay, it was only after he left that they were able to draft Kyrie. So you have you're on a clock as a small market team, and you're not going to get the same benefits that the bigger market or more attractive markets. And that's a that's a key characterization. I want to get into sure. that later because that's where Miami fits. But because they're not a big market, but they should be a more attractive market. Pat has just made it an unattractive market by what they've done here in free agency and, and signings over the past couple of years. But so I, he was always going to leave. He was always going to leave. And the only other guy who I think is in that same situation now may be Giannis, although he seems like a slightly different personality. And Anthony Davis is not an outspoken guy either, uh, but it does seem like Giannis, I, I've always felt like he's more likely to stay in Milwaukee long term. And, and, and also, and, and if we're talking about building out a clock, they're number one in the East. They've hired the right coach. They're doing at least a decent job. I wouldn't say they've done a great job because obviously you miss on the Jabari Parker pick. That's a big one. But they're doing at least a good enough job to say we're contending for titles, whereas New Orleans has never felt like that. They've never felt even close to winning the championship. Well, they, they, they tried once, right? They, they made the Boogie Cousins trade, and they, they gave up an asset. Uh, in Buddy Heald, who was kind of a depressed, seemed like a depressed asset at the time because he's an older, he was an older rookie, right? And he did not have a great rookie season. Now we're seeing him blossom in Sacramento, and it's looking a little bit better for the Kings, particularly because New Orleans ended up losing uh, DeMarcus anyway and weren't going to keep him and pay him long term. So, but that's all they've really done. I mean, they they were not, they were never able 
look, the Drew Holiday move, um, you know, where they gave up the pick that was the, the draft rights to New Orleans Noel and all the hinky lovers were like, oh, it's the worst trade ever that New Orleans just made. That one's worked out pretty good. I mean, Drew Holiday, we're, we're talking about later, I think is a top 25 to top 30 player in the entire NBA now. But other than him, what have they really uncovered? Julius Randle was a good low budget fine, which I would have liked the Heat to have been in position to do if they hadn't given so much money to do nothing James Johnson. Um, so, look, you're on a clock, and he was always going to leave there, and it's a tough market anyway. Um, it's Look, it's let's just be honest. It's not just that it's a small market. New Orleans is not a market with a ton of money either. Sure. It's it's tough, okay, there to, uh, you know, to fill the arena. And, look, for the Saints, they'll fill the stadium. They'll, you know, they'll fill the dome. Um, but basketball has never been what football is there. It's still primarily a, a football market. The Saints are good right now. Pelicans are in the West. It's hard to make inroads. So to me, it was always a matter of time. Now, the next question, and look, we talked about this with Evan Cohen on our last podcast, that this for the Heat, in his view, was always the target. It was always a clock, and we've talked about this for three years. It was always a clock for when Anthony Davis was going to get fed up with it. The problem for the Heat, which we will get into, is that they position themselves all wrong now, and they can't get him. And so that's a failure of the organization. It's a failure uh, of what the franchise has done over the past couple of years. Now, why now? Here's my theory on it. Um, I don't think he wants to go to Boston. And and that's and that's been the team that has been openly salivating for Anthony Davis for the past few years. It's why Danny Ainge has never made the big, big move. He made the move for Kyrie Irving because Cleveland handed him Kyrie Irving on a silver platter, right? right. For for an injured Isaiah Thomas and a couple of role guys. Like uh, okay, and, 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 so, a, and a Brooklyn pick that was gonna devalue because Brooklyn was never gonna be that bad. Right. So uh, for your Danny, like, of course, you want to you want to give me Kyrie Irving? I'll take Kyrie Irving. But he's rejected all of the other trades for everybody else. And why? Because he was stockpiling assets to get Anthony Davis. Now, the problem that Boston has and and Albert uh, touched on this is that they can't get Anthony Davis yet. They have to wait until the summer. They can't have him and Kyrie under their current contracts together. So Kyrie's contract has to expire. And that's stupid. This is stupid. Like I, I, oh, I, 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 agree. Hate, I hate so much. Like Boston has been so competent with everything that they've done from a front office standpoint. They've like they far exceeded what they should have been when they started that teardown uh, when they made the Pierce and Garnett trades. Like they've been they've done everything right to acquire everything, and then they can't do it because of some technicality in the CBA. Like it's just it's so stupid to me that like these are the ways that the NBA go- governs itself, and, and every league finds reasons to give itself more and more arcane rules so they can keep a salary cap and they can, you know, figure out all these different pieces. Like, I, I, and I, I deal with that as a soccer fan with MLS. MLS has the dumbest rules for governing itself. Why? Why do we make it so that it's like you need to, you need to have like a lawyer? I mean, it's, it has turned into a cottage in, in industry. Capologists, uh, the Larry Coons of the world, the Albert, no- the Albert Nobles why? of the world. Why? Why? Because of what we're doing today. I mean, we're, having an, we're having an emergency pod right now. Nobody cares about the game games anymore nobody cares about the no, games I, I understand. You get to the finals. I, know, I totally understand but like you can have all these things and not need a legal expert to figure out the freaking rules to this sport like because so so because they have a, ro- a rose exception extended guy they can't <laughs> trade for another rose exception like what is this like wh- why are these why are all these barriers in place for player acquisitions it would be more fun if you just had a more simple way of doing this well, the Supermax hasn't worked either, right? Like, because right. all these guys are turning down the Supermax and to the leave. Supermax like, the whole purpose more. of the Supermax. And and uh, I'm sort of saving this because the Riley section to me is the core part of this pod. Mm-hmm. But we, we've now seen six top 15 players move, yep. uh, a couple of them twice in the past two years. Okay, so so the key – and if you throw LeBron in there, which you, you have to, uh, it's seven. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not working, right? It's not mm-hmm. keeping players – uh, where they've been. But the the reason is, uh, and you and I agree on this with the rules, Boston's been incredibly competent, wh- whatever we think of Danny Ainge. Los Angeles has been incredibly incompetent. Yeah. And, and yet, and David Thorpe talked about that on our pod. Like, the reason that the, the Lakers don't have much to offer right now is because they they haven't drafted all that well. The one guy it appears they drafted right, D'Angelo Russell, they gave away to clear cap space. And, and their other guys, uh, you know, Kuzma and Hart were good finds. Ingram and Ball have underperformed. They don't have a premium asset to offer right now as a result of it, and yet they're going to be in the best position because basically Rich Paul and LeBron have now forced New Orleans' hand. And so why do I think that this is happening now? 
I don't think Anthony Davis wants to go to Boston. I think it plays into it that LeBron doesn't like Boston, doesn't like Danny Ainge, would like nothing better than to stick it to Danny Ainge. And he doesn't like the fact that the Cavaliers traded Kyrie Irving to Boston. To Boston, yeah. correct. Okay, and so all of that plays. The only thing LeBron likes in Boston is Brad Stevens. Doesn't like anything else to do with the organization. Although, already- it, although if LeBron James went to Boston, he want Brad Stevens fired within the first year. Because he wants everyone fired in the first. No, year. that's the no, only coach in the league. No, he that's, wants everyone fired in the first. That's year. no. The, I'll, I'll I am go, I, so I sick and mo- tired <laughs> of LeBron James wanting coaches fired. What the hell do you want from your coach? What do you I, want? I, I mean, I think For he just God wants him to sake. let him coach. But but I I would I would say, uh, Brad Stevens because I had long conversations with LeBron about Brad Stevens. And he went through why he loves Brad Stevens. I think that's the one exception in the entire him and Pop, obviously. And Pop, no, he'd want Pop fired too. He want Pop fired too. No, no question. How the hell is Pop eight games over five hundred? Anyway, all right. So let's we're, we're going to try not to divert too much from this. <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking at uh, this situation. I'm saying LeBron and Rich Paul and Anthony Davis are obviously in cahoots, and I and it's 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 fine with me, but it's fascinating to me that the national media. Uh, by the way, ESPN has moved its entire NBA operation to Los Angeles, right? Over the past year and a half, the jump, Winhorst, Rachel, everybody yeah, else. That, all- that, that had been happening like when like Bill Simmons was hosting the the, the countdown show. I understand, but, was but it explains why it explains why you're not going to get pushback on this because you you tell me, okay, you tell me how it is that ESPN had a conniption fit okay mm-hmm. about Bosch and wade and lebron you know talking during the olympics about eventually playing together when there's collusion going on in plain sight right now like in plain sight okay lebron's agent who by the way is a friend of his not even a childhood friend okay yeah. like like maverick carter this is rich paul who was a fan who was a super fan of lebron that lebron has basically propped up okay in this position, Rich Paul doesn't even do the contracts. Mark Termini does, or at least he used to. I believe he still does, okay, that he's propped up in this position. LeBron runs that agency. He runs clutch, okay? That, it's just it's just nothing else to it, okay? And you know I'm a LeBron fan, but it's just let's call it what it is, okay? And he runs clutch. Clutch takes over Anthony Davis. As soon as it happened, what did we say? He's going to Los Angeles. Yeah. LeBron is running the league through that agency right now directly. This is not like – talking on the back of a bus, okay, at the Olympics at Beijing or whatever about wanting to play together. This is in plain sight. LeBron James is Anthony Davis's agent because LeBron James is Rich Paul, okay? And so you're basically saying right now that LeBron James has decided that he wants Anthony Davis now rather than later. He doesn't want Boston to get a shot at him, all right? Also, if you take Boston out of the mix right now, this is very smart on LeBron's part, it's very possible that the Lakers – well, it's not very possible. It is true that the Lakers have less competition for his services because Boston could make the best counteroffer to what the Lakers can offer. Thus, the Lakers may be able to, unless New Orleans just holds tight on this, and this depends on how difficult Anthony Davis or more specifically Rich Paul and LeBron make it for the Pelicans over the next couple of months. If they just hold tight on this, it's very possible the Lakers will be able to keep one of their young players that they wouldn't have been able to keep if Boston's in the picture. So maybe when you're looking at, and I don't count Zizic, but like if you're looking at the group of, he's been fine, but when you look at the group of, of Ball and Kuzma, okay, and Hart and Ingram, which is the four that we're really talking about, it's very possible that the Lakers might be able to keep one more of those guys, probably not Kuzma, but one more of those guys than they otherwise would be able to. Maybe they can hold on to Josh Hart. Maybe LeBron likes Josh Hart as a rotation piece. And so he's manipulating this entire thing in plain sight are you gonna hear and i love them all to death all friends of mine are you gonna hear the jump take on lebron for this at los angeles no this is good for business this is good for business this is good for espn lebron coming to miami with chris bosh and Dwayne wade was not something necessarily that espn wanted to see it wasn't a storyline they wanted to see and they control the narrative in a lot of ways so to me this is all coordinated I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that last part i think i think i mean they started a heat index and they had four people covering the team at the same time and and they know, were and, killing them on a daily basis no, not no. the four people here not the no. four people here well win horse a little bit okay <laughs> <laughs> i love brian yeah not not, not but uh, okay not 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 wallace not necessarily arnovitz not haberstrow all four of these guys we've had on our pod right but uh, okay but the rest of espn was destroying the heat for 
manipulating the system. I mean, what is this if not manipulating the system? Like that's what yeah. this is. He's, no, I think I, no, I, 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 I mean he's LeBron James is Anthony Davis's agent by proxy. By proxy, that's agreed. what he is. Agreed. No, one hundred percent. No, one hundred percent. I'm t- I'm totally with you, but I, I do think in some respects that. LeBron opened the door for these things to become more acceptable, right? Because, I mean, Kevin Durant going to Golden State is just as, you know, you can talk about collusion, you can talk about, you know, Draymond Green texting him during the finals that we need you and, you know, and, and, and all these different things. And obviously the players recruited him to go there and then they had the meeting in New York and, and they, they got him to go. But the reaction just wasn't as, it wasn't as you know, filled with fervor because th- that – trail had already been blazed and so I do think that plays into it but yeah I mean I I, in some respects you kind of have to just tip your cap to LeBron and go well done man like you figured you figured it out like he's better at collusion than Donald Trump I mean (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean he he is he is exceptional he is exceptional at figuring out how to use the levers of power in basketball because right because uh, I mean as a player you only have so many a certain number of avenues he figured out a way with an agent uh, who as Brian Wynn horse tells the story was an extra in a sprite commercial of his when he was just starting in the nba uh and turned him into an agent that now runs an agency that basically is there to serve lebron now the same brian windhorse will tell you that rich paul is his own man who wants to have an agency that outlives lebron james but part of building that is getting these big name clients and funneling them to lebron james because clearly anthony davis is on board with this you wouldn't have signed with rich paul unless he was on board with this idea and thus pulling this power tactic so i i, I definitely think that this is the this has been the aim of Anthony Davis all along mm-hmm. is to go to LA and then I'm kind of looking right now so where are the big markets that he would resign right so let's say right. like he he would go to play and this is where we can transition into Miami so like I, I, <laughs> I like, wish I, I was I was just I was just kind of thinking right okay like if you're Dallas would you give up Luka Doncic for Anthony Davis and the answer no. is no because you're not you're, you're not going to be able to keep him you, if, if you have Anthony Davis on a five year deal you might do that but not now uh, you know given that you, know, you probably wouldn't resign. Uh, who are some of the other young stars in the league? Like, if you're Utah, would you give up Donovan Mitchell? No, because he's not resigning there. Because he's not resigning there, and so you go to the cities where he would, right? So you start. Uh, I think I think Boston, just because again, uh, what they could do uh, you know, as a team and winning championships. I think Boston, you know, could talk themselves into being able to resign him. Chicago, in a in a world in which they were a functioning franchise, would be able to. Well, he's uh, from there. Right, right. Uh, the, 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 the New York Knicks would too, uh, but again, they're not a functioning franchise. He wouldn't resign there. The Miami Heat are definitely one of them, again, because of uh, the history that they have as a franchise and where they're located. I, I think the Heat would definitely be one of them. Now, Golden State might be one of them, but I, I don't know what that trade looks like. If you're, if you're New Orleans, would you do... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would you do Clay Thompson and Draymond Green for Anthony Davis? I mean, that, 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 that's what that's what it would have to be, right? And, and right. then it would that, then it would have to be the assumption that Durant is going to resign. Sure. Would you do it as New Orleans? I mean, in the East, I I, I mean, Clay's an All Star in the East, but yeah. you know, but and Draymond probably is too. Yeah, you know, you're, I mean, it's always in the context of the conference, right? But yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, let's go back to some of the teams that you mentioned here already. And again, putting Miami aside. By the way, you skipped right over my my Trump uh, my Trump Lebron collusion <laughs> joke. I, I, I feel like I should have got a you, better laugh. You've been, you've, been, you've been working on that one all day, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't tweet it. I, I well, because yeah, I save certain things for the pod. But anyway, uh, let's go through the teams that you mentioned. Putting Miami yeah. aside, you mentioned the Knicks. Now, look, <laughs> everything is in the context of Dolan. If if he was not the owner there. It makes absolute sense, right? Because yeah. it's a huge platform for him. Clutch has wanted to get into New York for a while. I know that for a fact. Okay, and the other thing about it, your comment about Winhorst and and Clutch. I mean, again, remember, a lot of these guys, you need to deal with Clutch. Like, so yes, you're going to say very out front, Rich Paul is his own man. Like, I, I played that yeah. game too when I was when I was covering LeBron. Okay, there are certain things. Let's put it this way. Maverick Carter is his own man. I've dealt with Maverick in a lot of situations, and he's done this. Rich, anyway, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so, that just about so, says it all. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but let's, let's, and again, I, I give him credit for running with it, but LeBron runs the agency. We, we, we know that. All right. So, but let's look at the other teams. You've got, uh, let's look at the other team in Los Angeles, the Clippers. I think the Clippers are getting Kawhi. 
I think that's the likelihood. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, you know, so I, I think that it's going to be quiet even, in and, someone and, else and there. And even then, like, you look at, obviously, I mean, they have Tobias Harris on an expiring, but, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you're New Orleans, like, maybe you want to pay Tobias Harris a bunch of money, but uh, you don't know if you're going to. And then I, Shea Childress Alexander is probably their most um, attractive yeah. young asset, but, I mean, is that enough to swing an Anthony Davis trade? Like, even if they no. wanted to do that, I, I, don't, I don't know if they had enough. I don't think it's the Clippers at this stage. Philadelphia would be really interesting if their best player Mm -hmm. still was not another big that I don't know if that's a great fit next to him. So I don't, I don't see it. So if you're, if you're Anthony Davis's people, if you're LeBron James and you're looking at it and you say, okay, if we can get Boston out of the picture for now and give this some time to try to get a trade made, who else is going to be able to jump in with us? And there are just not a lot of other options. Now, there are good teams. Let's look at one. I would love for him to go to Denver. I would love to see him play with Jokic. I think they could play together. Jokic is such a good passer, as is yep. AD. Both of them can space the floor. And AD would cover up for all of Jokic's problems defensively, too. Like, you could play the two of them together with Anthony Davis at the four. He can cover enough ground. He can switch. Like, that would be deadly. Denver also has pieces that would be attractive to New Orleans, okay? Mm-hmm. Would a Jamal Murray be attractive? Would, it, would a Harris be attractive? Like, they have pieces they also have the Millsap contract that they could throw in to make something work to keep you somewhat competitive in the interim but is Anthony Davis going to sign in Denver no I wish no I wish I wish he would I wish he would I wish he would do what Paul George did but but, but it's almost because I think that's good for the game but I don't think he will but is it almost like uh, unless he's like threatening to sit out is it almost worth it like is there a team outside of the Lakers that would take a swing on this, not knowing whether or not he would stay, take the Oklahoma City chance on, on, on him re-signing, uh, take the Kawhi Leonard chance on him re-signing, and just say, you know what? I don't know if we can re-sign you, but we're going to try and we're going to win, and, and okay. try win the well, championship in 18 months. Okay, well, Masai did that with Kawhi, right? Yeah. Would he do it again? Uh, would, ooh, that's, would, that's, would, that's would, would he do it again? Would, would, he, would he offer you know, Siakam? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Ananobi and a couple and a couple of it would picks be like what Siakam Ananobi and uh, you need to get and, bigger and, money and, in there. You might have to throw and, a Ibaka and Serge Ibaka. Yeah, that trade works. Yeah, that probably. Works. I mean, we could we could make that work. There's enough pieces yeah. there. Is that if you're if you're if your whole goal is as Masai Ujiri, okay, you've built yep. and it's he's the best GM in the league in my opinion. Okay, better than you, better than Danny because Danny. Look, Danny's made some really good moves. It's hard to find a bad move that Danny's made, mm-hmm. but Danny also benefited from Billy King being a total idiot on this. Like, <laughs> like, like, like Masai. Well, I, Masai mean, t- I mean, listen, the, 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 you know, Masai made a cottage industry out of taking uh, advantage for the, of the Knicks for two years. Well, that, no, that, that's true. That's true. But also, if you just look at draft picks, um, Danny, look, the Tatum thing was a, was a stroke of genius making the yeah. trade with Philadelphia. Um, Jalen Brown looked like the right pick of three. It's not hard. It's hard to judge Jalen Brown this year. They, they Toronto, have Toronto has done better work in the teens and in the twenties. Uh, you know, Correct. turning you know Pascal Siakam and Ananobi and I mean, hell, even DeRozan, right. hell, even DeRozan. DeRozan was 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 an exception. I don't, did he make that pick? I don't know, but I mean, you, you still turn you know teens and twenties picks into did. guys that help you. Yeah, I think I, was it him or Colangelo? I can't remember if it was before or after he replaced Colangelo. But e- mm-hmm. either way, he's the best GM in the league to me. Um, at this stage, Bob Myers is up there too, but there's been some help, like you know, sure. Kevin Durant deciding he didn't want to take them on anymore, uh, and, and going out there. So, yeah. I'm not going to give Bob Myers, and Bob Myers has had some trouble filling out the roster the past couple of years. I would, I again, Demarcus decides he wants to play there, but in terms of finding gems, they haven't been great at it lately. But uh, Toronto is, is to me the gold standard organization, uh, in the Eastern Conference right now. Sorry, Heat, it's just the way it is. Um, would you make the move? Would you, would you, I mean, would, would, would you flip those pieces and yeah, say, I, w- I mean, we're going all in this year and then we're going to win a championship. So I guess and then we're going to say, we're going to dare Kawhi and AD to leave a championship team and right. leave a metropolitan city, by the way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, they instantaneously become the, 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 the favorite in the East instantaneously. Um, and again, if you can win the championship now, the question is, is that team good enough to beat? <laughs> starting five of Curry, Clay, Durant, Draymond, and Boogie Cousins. Because if it's not, then no. 
And I think the answer to that is no. So I, I would not do that if I were Toronto. I, I would understand if they wanted to, though. I would de- like, And I would defend it. Like, as much as I'm saying it, I wouldn't. I, I just think like uh, Boogie Cousins, since he's come back, uh, has helped them win. And he's, not, he's probably 40% of what he could be. So right. I, I just, I it's just like, it's just unfair. It's, just totally, it's, I, it's, I, I, it's totally stupid. But, but then we can make that case with every franchise, right? No, I, mean, I know. The, I, but, the, but that's why I think the Lakers have an upper hand in this. Because every franchise in the league is going to go, if you're – Milwaukee, do you throw the kitchen sink? Do you throw Middleton? Do you throw, you know, ev- everything that you have at this? If you're um if you're Philly, I mean, well, I guess Philly doesn't really make sense. Obviously Boston would, but if you're OKC, would you throw everything you have at this? If you're you know, if you're Houston, would you throw everything you have at this? I mean, obviously, you know, you have to consider that, but Golden State is the thing that I think is the real detractor. If you're saying you're a market that don't that doesn't think you can resign him, that would be the thing. Is that even if you're Denver and you want to trade for Anthony Davis, are you beating Golden State with your team and Anthony Davis? And I just, I, I don't think an, an organization can really talk themselves into that. Toronto might, because obviously they talked themselves enough into trading for Kawhi, you know, with only one year and letting go of DeRozan, who was on uh, longer term money. But I, I do think that if you if you're Toronto, you might try it. I just wouldn't. I I, I don't think that's enough to beat Golden State. Obviously, you give yourself the chance uh, to have you know Steph Curry slip on the court, but I, I just. Uh, God, I, I don't think I could talk myself into it. One other franchise you mentioned before we're going to get into the heat and some of these other permutations here is Houston. The problem, well, first thing, he'd never touch the ball, right? Like, so, I mean, I, but but the other thing is, um, what would it even look, because I think players resign in Houston. Players like playing in Houston, okay? There's no state tax. A lot of them live in the Galleria area. That's always been an underrated uh, NBA city for players. A lot of players like it. A lot of their wives like it. There's a lot of shopping in the area, etc. I've had this conversation with a lot of NBA players that like Houston seems to be a palatable place for NBA stars. But what would that deal even look like? Capella and what? Because right. I because it would ha- it would have it would, to it would have to be with- that what was it the four first round picks that was on the table that, uh, that was on the table for Jimmy Butler. Just here's right. my my whole slew of first round picks. Yeah, I would think right. Yeah, yeah. Do it, they it, it have it, to be it, something like that? If you have Chris Paul healthy, which not going to happen, but if you have Chris Paul healthy mm-hmm. and you've got Harden and you've got uh, and you don't and Maury wouldn't have a lot of t- time to sort of find other pieces, he might get a buyout piece or not. Maybe Carmelo would come back. I guess they, they're not allowed to do that. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, you know, and you, you had a core of Davis, Paul, and uh, and Davis and Paul have a relationship too, by the way. Um, but D- Davis, Paul, and Harden. Are you, are you beating Golden State this and, year? And, well, yeah. Well, if you include Capella, I guess that takes Capella. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, they went to seven games without Anthony Davis, so you'd have to think so, right? I mean, even without you know the, some of the role guys that they had last year. I mean, Anthony Davis as an upgrade over what they had in their big area. I think definitely you play those guys forty minutes a game. You hope Chris Paul doesn't break down, and uh, and and uh, you give it a go. I think Houston could definitely talk themselves into that, and like you said, they can talk themselves into with having James Harden and Chris. Chris Paul on long-term money, you can talk yourself into, you know, re-signing him, you know, for, you know, on, on a four-year deal or a two plus one or whatever, and you can keep Anthony Davis that way. So yeah, I, I definitely think if you're Houston, you, you, you're picking up the phone today and you're calling in New Orleans and go, what does it take? Uh, just as, you know, it was kind of it, basically the negotiations were done in the press today between New Orleans and the Lakers. You know, what, what is it going to take? If I'm Houston, I, I definitely try and get in there because, uh, you talk about as big threes go, even Chris Paul in his current state uh, with James Harden, the, the you know the reigning MVP of the league and uh, probably soon to be two time MVP of the league, and Anthony Davis, someone who we all we all thought could have been a perennial MVP candidate. Yeah, you definitely do that if you're Houston. Great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that is Brunt Insurance, where you can find all of your protection under one roof. They offer home, auto, commercial and life insurance, and they're licensed to write insurance for the entire state of Florida. That's Pensacola. All the way to the keys. They've got multiple carriers for all the product lines. Ensure you're paying the lowest rate in your area. And I can speak to this personally because I sent Greg Brunt all of my insurance policies that I had with other companies. He came back to me. He said, well, one of them you're doing okay, so just keep that one where it is. But I had one for a condo, and I had one for my cars. And he said, in both cases, I could be doing better. He saved me $700. Took one phone call, 15 minutes. I don't want to use 15 minutes because somebody else uses that. It took 14 minutes. And he got all of that stuff taken care of uh, for me. So check out 
bruntinsurance.com. That's bruntinsurance.com. Greg's also a proud sponsor of the Homes for Heroes program. That means if you're a first responder, teacher, military, or healthcare professional, you'll get a special discount from bruntinsurance.com. Here's the phone number if you prefer to do that, 954-589-2204. We have to... I think what we have to do is evaluate what the Lakers are actually offering here, sure. right? Okay. So, so let's look at the, the players that are the core players everybody talks to because if they still had D'Angelo Russell, he'd be more attractive than any no, of but, them. No, but, but do we know that D'Angelo Russell looks like what he does in Brooklyn probably not. in L.A.? Yeah. I Prob- just, yeah. Pro- 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 probably not. But all right, so let, let's, let's look at the four pieces. Uh, let's start with Lonzo. What is Lonzo Ball's upside? He's not going to reach it with the Lakers. He's not going to reach it with LeBron it's, handling it's, the ball that much. It's actually his teammate Rondo for me. I, I think okay. I think his best case. And Rondo, by the way, was you know I mean when the Heat played him in the in in those uh, first two years of the Big Three. Actually, they didn't play him in the first year, but definitely in the second year of the Big Three. I mean, Rondo was an important part. You know, like probably their best player at times when they had a big three of Garnett, Allen, and Pierce. So, mm-hmm. I mean, r- like Rondo at his peak, it's a bit harder now in the era of shooting uh, to live like that. But I think I think it's Rondo because uh, you look at his three point shooting; it's actually at you know thirty three percent. Which again, these are with uh, LeBron opportunities, um, right? You know, so I mean, that's probably as good as it's going to get on five attempts a game from the free throw line. It's an unmitigated disaster. He's forty two percent from the foul line, which for a guard is just so awful that's um, also the best indicator of of shooting, shooting prowess yeah. so so if, if he's bad from the line yeah um it's going to be hard for him to become a better shooter now we say this as justice winslow stands or at least i am and we've seen now justice is now within four threes four made threes of what Kawhi had in his fourth season so all the talk about how justice couldn't get to be the shooter that Kawhi is mm-hmm. he's already on par with what Kawhi was at this stage so and it can be done it's back-to-back years at 38 percent. so right I, I think this is it's not a huge sample size but it's getting there it's getting pretty close mm-hmm. uh so it can be done but I, the, my thing about Lonzo Ball is this I, I've actually found him to be a better defender than I anticipated mm-hmm. um but I, I don't I don't know that he it's funny because I thought the one thing he would have is lead guard mentality that that he would be and I've watched him I've, the last two times I've watched him play De'Aaron Fox. OK, I, have been interesting to me because I watched them play against each other in college. And I remember Fox tore him apart, tore him apart. OK, and it's been the same the last two times I've seen him in the pros. And to me, like De'Aaron Fox just looks like more of the modern point guard. Can he be a top 10 point guard in the modern NBA? Not without Can shooting. he be as good as not, Mike not, Conley? Not without shooting. No, I mean, Mike Conley started his career as a bet. You talk about examples of players that, that you know, can get better at shooting. Conley is definitely one of them. Um, but uh, not without being a 35% three-point shooter and a 70% free throw shooter. Like, And those, I mean, those have to be substantive improvements from where he is now. So, I mean, no, I, I, I don't think, I think of current indicators, I would probably, as much as I, I, I loved him in college, I love what he kind of represents as a point guard, uh, as a player, obviously, the off-court stuff notwithstanding. But as a point guard, um, I, I, I just sort of, I, I, I think that, in this era, it's just too hard to do without shooting. It's why, frankly, you know, I was so negative about Justice Winslow for so long is because I, I, I just don't think you can be a six seven wing without being able to shoot. And he's been able to at least uh, go a long way towards fixing that and obviously fixing his game around the rim as well. Unless Lonzo shows signs of doing that, and obviously it can happen, uh, particularly in this era, you know, going to the right team and the right coaching staff, um, I, I just, it's so hard for me uh, to really, you know, say based off his first year and a half, there's a clear ceiling and a clear sign that he's going to get there. Uh, and, and you would make him the key linchpin in this, a, a trade of this magnitude. And we're not talking about uh, trading for a piece that'll help you, you know, that'll be your third guy, or your fourth guy that'll help you win the title. This is Anthony Davis we're talking about, mm-hmm. who's probably the sixth or seventh best player in the NBA. I don't think Lonzo Ball is good enough to be a linchpin of a trade of that magnitude. I don't think anyone of the Lakers is, to be honest. Yeah, all right. So let's look at the others. Because if we say that Ball is not, then the most likely one after that should be Ingram. Yes. And th- the issue with Ingram, who was drafted second overall, and I'm not total slave to metrics. His metrics are horrible. Uh, if you look at some of the numbers, like if you just go to basketball reference and you look at that draft class, his value of the replacement player is 30th in his draft. Now, some of that has been the team that he's played with. Um, but some of the other metrics are pretty terrible too. And we've also seen that when LeBron's out, like that was the whole thing. How is he going to fit with LeBron? But when LeBron's out, like he has no capability at this stage of his career to carry a team for even a short stretch. And and so, I I mean, I like his, he's another of those guys. Like he reminds me a little bit of Harrison Barnes. Okay. Um, 
where you like the skill set, like everything is there. Like he's, he's, a, you know, he, you know, he has decent size for his position. He's mobile. He should have the ability to shoot. He did have a stretch in the second half of last season where he did shoot the ball very well from three, but like he never quite puts it together. And I, with Harrison Barnes, it seems to be, and it's not an intelligence thing with Harrison Barnes. If you ever talk to Harrison Barnes, he's a very like deep thinker. But just from a basketball IQ standpoint, he does some things that you're shaking your head. I, Josh Richardson does some of those too. And it's another weird one because he's another uh, intelligent guy if you talk to him off the court. Um, and Ingram does some of that also. Like I watch Ingram sometimes. I'm like, what is he doing? Like what, yeah, what, and, what is he trying to accomplish? And you talk about leading the team in the aftermath of LeBron leaving in the 16 games uh, since LeBron has been out. Um, Brandon Ingram has been a, a minus 10 net rating uh, since, since LeBron has left the team when he's played about two thirds, more than two thirds, probably more like uh, 70% of the minutes uh, that, uh, of the available minutes for the Lakers since, since LeBron has gone out, uh, Brandon Ingram, a, a minus 10. That's mostly on defense, by the way, actually the offense is relatively the same, whether he's on the court or off the court defensively has just not been uh, as good of a player. And if there was going to be a time, and it's, this has actually kind of been an interesting test tube uh, for these players since LeBron has gone, what were they going to be? in the aftermath. Ingram is a, is a negative 10. Kuzma's a negative 6. Hart's a negative 6.5. Ball's the only positive. Uh, and obviously, he's missed some of these games due to injury. But in 439 minutes, he's a plus 2. He's been the only positive of these four guys that we talk about as the core of a potential trade. And again, that's basically, if you're, if you're the Pelicans, it's what you're trading for, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trading for these Lakers young guys, you're trading for these Lakers young guys to be your team. And then you then re-sign them and you carry on with their development that way. That's basically what you're trading for. What, what are you going to be other than a lottery team for the next two years? So I guess the overall point is the Lakers have two guys who've underperformed their draft status. They have two guys who've outperformed their draft status, but what they really have is a bunch of B players, right? Like I, that's what they have. And so if you're New Orleans, are you okay with it? Now we had David Thorpe on and he was in favor of it. Remember he said, if, if you're New Orleans, you just do it. You take the young guys and you develop them. You try to build with them outside the shadow of LA and outside the shadow of their draft status, the shadow of LeBron. And you see what you have, I guess. Um, I believe there's probably a team that can make a better offer out there. Again, we're sort of struggling to find, identify exactly what that team is. But if you're the Lakers, you have to offer it. And so I saw some, one of the offers today, Brad Turner, who knows the Lakers very well, has covered them for a long time. I think he had the offer at Kuzma, Hart, Zizic, and a first. No, I, I, think, I think Ball was in there. Oh, was Ball in there. So yeah. it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't it was Hart. Ball, it was Ball, Kuzma, Hart, and Zubac, I think. Okay, so I would say and, 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 okay. and, a, and a first, I think. Okay, so it was yeah. those four pieces. So basically, you would be holding on to Ingram. We'll get back to our episode here in a second. I first want to tell you about another of the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that is Berlitz Broward. You may be familiar with the Berlitz method of teaching languages. I can speak to it directly because about a year ago, my daughter was about three and a half years old. I put her in Berlitz Broward. This is over on Flamingo Road in Pembroke Pines because we wanted her to learn Mandarin. She already knows English and Spanish fluently, but kids have an easier time learning languages at times than adults do, so we figured that she might enjoy it. Not only does she now enjoy it, she now counts up to 100. She knows all the colors and shapes. When we go to Chidi's restaurant, she speaks Mandarin with the waitresses she orders for us. Sometimes not the greatest, but it's pretty amusing to actually watch it. But the other thing that Berlitz does for you is they have adult programs, and so that's actually what we want to introduce you to today their adult programs they teach languages english french spanish mandarin italian german portuguese and more so if you ever wanted to learn any of those languages or maybe english is not your first language and you want to learn how to pronounce better and be better in the business space that's something that they can work with you on so i'm going to give you a phone number here make sure that you call and mention five reasons here is the phone number 954-743-00 Seven, seven. So again, they have kids programs, but they got plenty of adult programs. And I can tell you because we've been doing it, they will work with your schedule, whatever works with you in terms of when you have to work, when you've got things with your family, they will put you on the schedule and they will get you the right instructor. So again, mention five reasons, 954 Seven four three zero zero seven seven. Okay, so now can we talk about the local aspect of this? And, and, and I, I definitely agree that you want to rail against Miami. But if the Heat put Dragic... Richardson, Winslow, Bam, all on the table. Mm -hmm. Is that better or worse than what the Lakers are offering? Uh, you're putting you're putting Dragic, Richardson, Bam. Bam. Everything. 
and and, and well, Winslow. Winslow, uh, Winslow has that weird uh, contract situation, right? It, like it, where it, I think it works in the trade. I mean, it works in the trade machine. So I, I, okay. I don't. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so you're trading Dragic, the three kids, and a pick. Yeah. Uh, if I mean, if I'm the Heat, I have to do it. No, for, no, I, I, I agree with you there. Which, by the way, is not is not consensus on uh, not consensus on hashtag Heat Twitter. But because everybody falls in love with their own children, right? right? I mean, because Justice Win- <laughs> like Justice Winslow's had two good months, and even then, like you look at like some of the games in there, they're not amazing, right? He's had but he's had two good months, right? The, the reason I do it is not. It, it, I think we should discuss it from this end before we get into whether New Orleans would do it. Sure. The reason that the reason that I would do it is because of the nature of the Heat organization. It's because the way that they've always built has been get the star, then find the pieces. And because of what you and I have talked about, which is that they have the ability to do two things. One, attract people to the organization, provided they don't F the whole thing up like they did the last you know, summers of 16 and 17 by clogging up all this cap space, that they are an attractive destination because they are a good organization with a known quantity at coach, okay, a team that wants to win, that has proven it will spend money most of the time, okay, when they have something that they're actually chasing. And obviously the weather, the women, everything else that Miami comes, no state tax, everything else Miami comes with. That's the first part. The second part is they've also found, proven repeatedly, and we hope Derek Jones Jr. is okay, uh, but they've proven repeatedly that they're able to find role guys and that they shouldn't overpay them. And so your feeling is if you can just get Anthony Davis in the door, he's a player that other players are going to want to play with, you'll get a second star, and you'll fill out the roster with developmental guys. And will that be enough? I don't know. But you hope that in your culture and your organization that you can make a run at it. And that's kind of the way that you go about it. So I think it's different for the Heat than other organizations, which is why as much as I have been a you know booster of justice all the way along, I think you would have to look very seriously at making that trade. If you're New Orleans, is that better than what you're getting offered by the Lakers? Absolutely. Like, I don't think there's any question. Like, uh, to me, I-, I would take, maybe this is bias here, I think Justice Winslow is as good a prospect or a better prospect than anybody the Lakers would be offering. I, I do. I-, I think he's better than Brandon Ingram right now. I think he's better. I- okay. I-, I, agree with- I agree with you there. And then the other conversation would be Ball. And again, you know, we're-, we're basically saying that Lonzo Ball could make the turnaround that Justice Winslow has just proven that he made. Right, that right. you know, it, like in the space of years three and four, which I didn't think was possible, that a player in year three and year four was going to make a significant jump. He's made a significant jump, and given the right role, he can, uh, you know, prosper. We talk about you know his fit with the current New Orleans team, you know, playing with Drew Holiday. I think that works pretty well, and in general, the other players that are coming back. I think as again, you're you're basically if you want if you if you're the New Orleans Pelicans, you want to build a new team with the assets you get back for Anthony Davis. This goes a pretty decent length of the way. And again, and would you say Josh Richardson is as good or better than any of the Lakers players? Right, right now, he's better than all of them. If, I think. If you're, now, now, say- now, his, now, his upside, I, well, he, he's there with Kuzma, I think, because I think sure. Kuzma's the best of them right now. Mm-hmm. But Richardson, his upside, Richardson's a better shooter, by the way. And he's also a better defender. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now, yeah. the, the, pro- the problem with Josh is, is just consistent aggression, right? And I don't know that he's ever going to develop that, but you're hoping so. Although, I, as I mentioned on a patron shot, the Heat have moved away from it because his usage rate has been collapsing over the past month because they've ba- it's basically justice has replaced it and, and Josh just keeps slipping. And I, I think a lot of it is they've realized he's not an alpha. And so, and then justice is, and let's just ride this. But yeah, I would absolutely. Look at me. Look, you could throw in Wayne Ellington to give more cap space too, if you need to take something back from them. I mean, that's an option. Right, also, right. I threw. I think I threw in Rodney, and then you take back each one more from them, which is one that they wanted to get rid of for a while. Right. So, so you can. Right. <laughs> they gave too much to him. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely think that you can offer more. Um, do I think they'll offer all that? No, you don't, I don't. think so. I, I don't. Why not? If I you're Pat, if you're, not, if you're Pat, why not take this swing? You're, you, you, we've talked about you know all the all the mistakes that he's made, and uh, like. I, I got I got laughed at on Twitter today when I put this out there and it got like you know one person retweeted it and next thing you know I'm getting all different kinds of <laughs> you know uh, NBA logo avies in my mentions making fun of me for saying this but I mean I think it's a better trade offer than the Lakers I really do and like if we're talking about a shortage well, we're of not teams, even talking about Bam who who has right the, right like not I mean be Anthony Davis you can, but, you can but, maybe but, say that it's too much but I I I don't think anything is too much right now and but and 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 then you know Christian Hernandez from Heat Beat and I uh, got into a little argument he said that uh, you don't give up you don't give up the farm for anything more anything less than a top five player 
I think that's a semantical line that you're drawing and basically saying you'd rather have Giannis than Anthony Davis. I, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Christian and, I, Christian and I are going to differ on that. Anthony Davis yeah. is a top five player. No, he's well, not in a t- he might, he, no, might, he no, might not be. But like, he's but, not, no, no, no. He's not in a top five situation. I agree. Um, he, I, okay, so, he, okay so, who, so who are you bumping out of the top five? So the NBA rank uh, had Anthony Davis at six, and, um, and they had— they have, they have Harden ahead of him? Yeah. I'd take Anthony Davis. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, he plays both ends. I understand, but I mean, James Harden, I mean, he, James he Harden plays, MVP I, of the league, and, and just, I, I, just took I the Rockets to the Western we Finals. Value, because we value scoring. Okay, I don't value watching Harden play, and I, I admit <laughs> I have a bias here. But like, we value scoring, but but I'm sorry, Anthony Davis is an elite defender, elite. Okay, he's a top five defender in the NBA when he's engaged, when he has something to play for. And he's also um, an ideal teammate. All right. There's never been any problems with him in that regard. Um, I mean, I, look, LeBron, LeBron has been grooming him for years before Rich Paul even got him. I remember being with LeBron in New Orleans way, way back when LeBron was gushing about how Anthony Davis was the next one in the entire NBA. I, I don't look. I, I, I think he to me, he's a top five player. I mean, OK. Uh, look, we can have an would argument you, about you, Curry and the way that he changes the game for people and all the rest of that. You, but would you have Kawhi put, over him? I I think I think a fully engaged Anthony Davis playing for something is is better than Kawhi. Yes. Okay. All right. So you, so you so you have him as a top five player. Yeah. No, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with and even and even if he wasn't, if you want to make an argument for Harden or Giannis or Curry or whomever, like I, I don't think you just draw the line at five because five is a round number, right? Like I, I think I, I like I would give up the farm for six, maybe not for Kawhi in his current contractual situation. If he was on a long term deal, I definitely would. But uh, but yeah, I I think you call. But these New are Orleans. semantics that top. Five, not top five. Right, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, all, all, it's, all of the guys you're talking about. We're talking about, okay? about difference making guys. Yeah, guys but, that help right. you that, that are that are like can be the best player on a championship team. I think all these guys are. Correct. Uh, and if you're looking at the top, let's even extend it to seven or eight, okay? The the only guy on there who's at his level as a defender is Kawhi. That's the only one. I mean, Durant can be, has proven it over the past couple of years. LeBron's LeBron nowhere near that anymore well, well, defensively. He's, well, he's, he's not on a night to night basis, but you know, game seven of the finals, you need a chase down block. LeBron can still yeah, do that. Yeah, fine. Uh, yes, I, I'm with you on that. But I'm saying I'm saying consistently, okay, sure, like sure. a game changing defensive player, like Anthony Davis changes the way that other teams play offensively at the same time as he's getting you twenty eight and grabbing fifteen boards. Like that's I, I, let's not the only knock against Anthony Davis. There's no personality knock. There's no playing knock. There's nothing on the court he can't do. The only knock against Anthony Davis is he struggled to stay healthy. And that that is mm-hmm. something that you would have to look at. But no doubt. look, you're going to you're going to you're going to have that knock with anybody like I mean, with Kawhi. I mean, Toronto was taking a shot on a guy who basically decided to sit yeah. out an entire season because he felt like it. I, I mean, that's what happens. You, I mean, you take, Kyrie, a shot. you take a shot on Curry. Um, right, you take a shot on Curry, who had ankles that nobody thought he was going to be able to play right. consistently. Again. You've had Kyrie, who always misses time. I mean, mm-hmm. you talk about it's top really, ten it's players. It's really only Harden and Durant that are the ones that are always healthy. Always healthy. I mean, and, and, well, LeBron and, and has LeBron until now, yeah. Right. So, so uh, yeah. No, look, uh, let's not. I mean, it's stupid to to nitpick over where Anthony. I mean, it was one thing to nitpick over Jimmy Butler to say is he top ten? Right. Is he top fifteen? Where does he fit? But Anthony Davis is a superstar. He's not a star. He's a superstar. Mm-hmm. And and I so 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 if you're if you're Pat Riley, do you go to Dell Dems and say the entire roster is available? Anyone you want? I, I think he'll. I, I just said I don't think he will because it sounds like so much. <laughs> now I'm sort of changing my opinion. And in 10 okay, minutes. and and if and so, are we saying that if Pat Riley does do that and say it can be Dragic, Ban, like basically your three best young guys, mm-hmm. an expiring contract, and Dragic? Mm-hmm. Do you think it has any chance of being the most attractive offer to New Orleans? Oh, I think it has a chance, yeah, because if we're okay. talking about the Lakers, I, because sure. we went through all the other teams. Yep. So so if you're talking about Toronto headlining a package with Serge Ibaka and two of their young players, Siakam and, uh, and Adenobi. What if or, they make it three? Mike. What if they go DeLon Wright, uh, you know, or, okay. or just or Fred, Fred Van Vliet or something like that? Right, and he just re-signed, right? Uh, yeah. so, so you could, okay, maybe. I, I think the Heat's package is more – Interesting than that. I mean, Dragic versus Ibaka, and then you're looking at the young players. Does um, you know? I really like Siakam, but is there more upside he's, he's in not Siakam really a than Bam? He's not really a build around piece, right? And then and then you're talking about Justice and Josh. Yeah. Now the problem is, let's look at it from the Heat perspective, and sure. I, I we don't really have time to do this. I was going to bang on the Heat for not putting themselves in the right position, but I guess you could say that they still are in the right position if they just want to give up everything good of the roster. Right. I guess I, I guess they still could do that. 
The problem with it, of course, is for now, at least temporarily, is you would need to get the commitment from Davis because Davis is going to play, play with, you know, excuse my French here, a lot of garbage, um, you know, you know, for a little while until Pat can clean this thing out, right? So what, what would your starting lineup even be? You trade Dragic, right. Winslow, Richardson. So you're going to put Davis next to Olenek, and then you're going to have uh, – or, or James Johnson. You can't play James Johnson at the three, right? So Rodney's going to play the you three. You so play James Johnson at the three. Uh, it has. I, I, I don't if, know. If, if I don't know shooting, if he has the lateral if, quickness to do it. No, now. but if the shooting, if the shooting at big is Olinick and Davis, like you have at least enough on the perimeter, just so that even if you don't have James Johnson shooting, you can at least survive. And who's your two, Dion? Yeah, I mean, you can. And who's, you, who's your point guard? I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe Wayne Ellington. Maybe uh, Bradze Weber. Yeah. I mean, who's your? <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- definitely the the point guard situation would get a little hairy if uh, you, you is is Yante Maiden? He's not a point guard, is he? No, no he's yeah. not. He's a wing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you I, might you might have to figure out a trade for a point guard after that. It's Rio. It's Rio. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it's real. Stop I think it. that I, I would say that's where we should end. But there's one other thing I want to get to here. Uh, <laughs> so do I? Do we think this is going to happen? though? No. Uh, the I, other I think possible- it could. I think it could. I really do. I think Pat Riley can make you the just God- want our can- you just want our download numbers to go no, up, which I appreciate. I'm not, I'm, I, you know me, Ethan. I'm not the guy that's heat homer. You know this could happen, but it's like if you put all your cards on the table, I don't think it's that bad of an offer. No, it's not a bad. It's not so a bad offer. So why wouldn't the Heat I- do it? Why wouldn't the Heat do it? Do, do, well, I think Pat might try to hold one of the pieces back. So so, what if he tries to? Okay, but then but then if Del Demps goes, no. But if Del Demps goes, I want the last piece. Are are you stopping yourself from doing it for Anthony Davis? Well, well, the 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 thing would be to try to hold, to be competitive. Now you'd have to hold Dante Dragic, right? Yeah. So what? Could you? Is there anything else that you can? Well, I mean, I mean, you'd you'd have to sell them on on Olenek, maybe. Um, Hey, we're we're DNPing him right now, but trust me. (laughs) <laughs> He's really good. He was good last night. I, I, I don't. I mean, he kind of showed again. I mean, I, I, they, they have to clean out James Johnson somehow. But they're not going to take James Johnson. They're not going to take Dion. So you're, and you're not going to take. They're not going to take Tyler. Not now. Not until it's expiring. So yeah, I mean, you'd have to try to sell them on Olenek over is there, Dragic. Is there, is there any garbage of theirs you can take and you give them Whiteside? I don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can you take? I didn't so- even... is, what, what does Solomon Hill have left on his contract? Oh, they came God, back that, to? When they signed that one, I was just. I mean, I yeah. mean, I mean, the, the, New, New, New Orleans, New Orleans was New Orleans was Miami before Miami in terms of signing oh, bad my, contracts to long term deals. Because I mean, remember they, they dumped Ashik last year to Chicago. Like they've yep. they had some calamities on their cap sheet. Well, yeah, Dell has not done a fantastic Solomon, job. Solomon I, Hill still got a year left he's got a year at 12.7 left so oh. so so could you take solomon hill back and give them white side you give you take both solomon hill and etuan Moore? i don't know i i guess all right let's get to the next piece because there's right. another guy on new orleans that i'd like sure. to have sure uh which is drew holiday yeah. and if you if you can't get anthony davis if they're gonna go full rebuild hmm. why would they not trade holiday and I, I feel like heat fans have not really recognized how good drew holiday has become uh you know the, the other night he was i think one rebound shy of a triple double and he had four steals. I think he's 28 now. Like people mm-hmm. think he's been in the league forever. He has. Remember, he was the youngest player in the league when he first came in. So you remember him from the the Big Three series, right? 2011 first round series, first playoff series for the Big Three Heat. That was eight years ago. Drew was 20. He was 19 or he was 19 going on 20. He's become a very different player. He plays both spots. And I'm looking at his contract, which everybody thought was outrageous at the time. He's got the 21st highest contract in the NBA. It's the same contract as Otto Porter. He's a better player than Otto Porter. I think he's a top 25 player now. Could you poach Drew Holiday? Would you trade? This is the trade that I pitched. Would you trade Josh Richardson, Kelly Olynyk, and a second for Drew Holiday? Okay, Drew so, Holiday? So, what, so what is your thinking on this making the heat better? Well, because I like Josh Richardson, but I think mm-hmm. there are certain things Josh Richardson is going to struggle to become. And I think Drew Holiday is already there. So he, Drew is older, mm-hmm. uh, but Drew is a natural ball handler, whether he plays the one or the two. To me, he's a perfect backcourt partner for Justice Winslow. Mm-hmm. Perfect, all right? Because he can take pressure off Justice, and as Justice starts to develop some of the more off-ball parts of his game, you'll have two guys who can attack. Then what I would look at, if you're not trading Dragic, is after you get Goran to opt out after this year, which I think is is very possible, okay, and you sign him to like a three-year, $36 million deal, and you make him, I think his game's going to age fine. He's got to stay away from nagging injuries. And you make him your Dwayne, basically. You make him your, you know, ball handler off the bench, you know, slash scorer, and that's your three-guard rotation. 
going forward. Winslow, Holiday, and uh, Winslow, Holiday, and Dragic. Yeah. Now, okay. So the one thing that that does scare me a little bit on uh, on Holiday is that as his volume has gone up from three in his career, his efficiency yeah, gone has gone down. So yes. he's, he's 33% from three right now. I mean, from two, he's you know, 44.5%, 48% from the floor. He's, he's, he's efficient enough, but I, I think that that is a concern. But um, I just – and he's averaging 21 points, eight rebounds a game. If you're just doing the counting stats, uh, those are really impressive. And I think he's been, you know, the second best player on this team and was last year when they got to the second round. And, I mean – as an upgrade on Josh Richardson, I mean, I guess the difference, I, I guess for me the thing is that it's not like Josh Richardson is on a, a contract you're getting off of soon. It's, it's a long-term right. deal that's a really good deal. And but you want to get off Kelly? Not that badly. I, like, I, I think if you're telling me I can get off of waiters, uh, if, if, uh, if I threw him in this trade with Richardson, I'd do it. If you're telling me if I can, if I can get off James Johnson, if I can get off Tyler Johnson, if I can get off Whiteside. Then what, if you can get off, what if you can get off James Johnson and take something back that has fewer years? What if you take Solomon Hill back? So, so, it's, all right, so I'm, I'm going to try and work the trade here as we talk in the all trade right. machine. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, I didn't think we'd be doing a second trade machine episode this week. But, <laughs> okay, so all right, so – uh, okay, so the trade would be Drew Holiday and Solomon Hill for James Johnson, Olenek, and Richardson. Mm-hmm. You're taking on another one point, uh, let's call it $1.7 million in salary uh, in that from Solomon Hill's number. Um, yeah, well, I that mean, works. That works then. Yeah. Uh, so, you could throw in McGruder right. if it didn't. So but you're it, basically it works. you're you're getting rid of Richardson for for Drew Holiday and some some relief of J- on James Johnson, Kelly Olenek. Ah oh, man, I would say yes, but only – I'd say that's a perfectly fair trade uh, for both teams. I think New Orleans probably gets a rotation player or two more than they currently have. Um, I, I will say, though, if we're talking about uh, rebuilding and you want to get rid of Drew Holiday to rebuild, why you want to take on years uh, three three and four of a James Johnson contract that's 31 and 32 years old, I don't know why you do that. Um, but I, I, I would get it if you know if New Orleans wants to get rid of some money, but you're taking back money – I, I I don't think New Orleans would do that, but if I were Miami, I would. Yeah, I, I think that's likely. And if you're a Heat fan, I think you would. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on what you want to be as New Orleans. Like, are you comfortable right. breaking this thing down to the ground when you're not an attractive free agent destination? They're sure. going to have to build through the draft. Like, it's going to mm-hmm. take them years to get another player like Anthony Davis. Okay, yeah. and they're not in a position this year to get bad enough to get Zion or mm-hmm. Redditch or one of those guys from Duke, right? So it's going to take them years to get back there. They may be okay taking, you know, some money going forward just to fill out the roster a little bit. That they may be willing to do it if if they feel like Olenek is a good piece. But all of this comes back to this, okay? And I think we can close here. I think the Heat. There's always a way to do something, right? So sure. I think that's what Pat would look at. It, but and, now, and, and, cre- pro- and credit to the Heat as well for developing players enough so that even when it looked dire. You've at least developed enough in the 40th pick in the draft, the 10th pick in the draft, and the 14th pick in the draft to have three attractive young assets to throw into a trade like this. Normally, teams don't do that, but the Heat do, and credit to them as an organization and as a coaching staff for managing to do that. Uh, credit to them as, yes, as an organization and a coaching staff, and now we're going to take away some credit by saying that if they had, <laughs> if, if, one, if one of those, and I'm going to throw Kelly to the side here, okay, but one of those other four contracts, had been like even within the range of being okay, like not, yeah. not even good, but like three out of tens instead of one out of tens, then they would be able to consummate a trade because they would have some kind of a piece to fill it out without having to throw Dragic in right. that would be attractive to another team. And, and I guess and, that's – go ahead. And, no, and, and, you, and the argument was – I remember at the time was, well, you'll have the cap space at the end of it, which every freaking team in the league will have cap space in four years from now. But um, – but, you're still saying, all right, some of these contracts will come off the books when Anthony Davis becomes a free agent. But I think mm-hmm. the one calculation that I think was wrong in, in the number of calculations that are wrong <laughs> about what the Heat have done in recent years is that players are now no longer waiting for free agency to start taking hold of their future. Anthony Davis has 15 months left on his contract. He's taking hold of, of, of his future. This is now the theme around the NBA is you don't wait until you're an expiring contract. You don't wait until you're a free agent. And, and this has been... 
a, a concept that has been well coined called pre agency. You are now a free agent the minute you have a year left on your contract. Right. And I think that's the, the that's among the bigger miscalculations is that Pat Riley was building towards a future in which these guys are free agents and now they're pre agents a year beforehand. And he, you know, I, I, as I said, I think they have a trade offer just about. But as you're saying, they could be even more attractive as a destination. As I only want to go there. You know, if Anthony Davis says I only want to go to the Lakers, it's because they've created an attractive destination. We, however, it is that they've done that, and a lot of teams have managed to do that. Where I only want to go there because that's the attractive place. Miami could have been one of those places if they had managed their team better. And that's what Brian Windhorst has talked about. That other GMs don't understand why Miami did what they did because they they took them themselves out of this and there's one other factor to consider here would rich paul actually commit to signing a long-term deal with the heat i don't know if, if, his, I, if his client wants to do it i mean if his, if his yeah. client does i guess but i don't know where that relationship is right now but sure. that, that is something else to consider but I, I guess look if you knew as a heat fan or, or as the heat that you didn't have to trade all of your good young assets plus Dragic, okay then it might be attractive to Anthony Davis where he might say, I want to play in Miami. But the reality is to get Anthony Davis, you're going to have to give up pretty much all of any, anything that Anthony Davis would actually want to play with. Mm-hmm. And so that makes it really challenging. And I think that's that on the, in totality is kind of where the Heat um, have tripped up. All right, we'll talk more NBA. Uh, actually, I think we're going to talk to uh, Brian Getzeiler. Uh, who goes by at Hoop Critic on Twitter. Um, that sh- he's also on NBA Radio, Sirius XM NBA Radio. We're going to talk to him as well. So we'll get into more of these topics. Figured we'd get this one out to you today. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Fire in the Podcast. Thank you so much.